and I'm really glad you're here. As part of this ongoing series, as part of the movement to make suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past, we get to talk to some amazing experts in their field, people who have stories, people who have lives that are the ones that inspire. Not because they set out to inspire the world, but because they inspire themselves to get up day after day and keep going. And by hearing their stories, we can choose to be inspired. And our guest today is one of those people. So please help me welcome to the studio, Entharani Arul. So when you are finding your controls and coming into the studio, there you are. Yay. All right. How are you? I am well. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here today. Thank you for this opportunity. And Therani, you're going to have to do a tech check so that we can hear you. I am so glad that you're here because you have such an important topic that fits right in with our mission. So in Thrani, when we are talking about self-esteem, what does that mean? And when did this become a conversation in your life? Well, self-esteem meant means is means growth to me. Um, it means um, experiences that comes into my life that came into my life uh, is part of my journey um, and it's about growth and this came into my life at a very young age I was about nine years old and my mother suffered from mental health and she was a diabetic and she lost her sight progressively mm. and I was in that environment um, as, a, as a child um, and, and grew up in that environment. And I was the oldest girl. And, and I was, uh, I was, you know, it was an expectation that I cared for my mother and took care of her uh, as, a, as a female. And I, it was, it was, a, it was a great learning experience. I learned tremendous things. I mean, I lived in constant fear of losing her because she was a diabetic. Uh, she would go, she went unconscious and that was wow. terrifying uh, as a child. I didn't know what to do. My father was at work and I had no clue how to deal with that situation. All I could think of doing was running outside and screaming help until a neighbor stuck her head out the window and said, call 911. And so I went, I went in, I was so terrified. My hand like was literally shaking. And I thought, cause my, I thought my mom was dead when I went to wake her up to come and eat. And I just, I, I, I managed to get, you know, turn that dial cause we had a rotary phone and it was like, you know, literally trying to turn that dial. And I, and I did, I finally did. And I managed to get a hold of 911. And, uh, and then of course the ambulance arrived and, and she was, she, she was alive again. <laughs> you know, she was alive. She wasn't, she wasn't dead. I realized because, you know, at that moment I thought she was, um, so it was just terrifying. And as time progressed, I, I, I always knew in my life that I had to, there was something greater. I, I felt that this was all there for a reason. I didn't know what it was, um, but I just, you know, cause I, my mom didn't, went unconscious several times after that, but I knew what to do, how to deal with it. Um, and as time progressed, I, I became, you know, I, I started doing volunteer work, which was also terrifying because I had to learn how to get on the bus. I had to go and deal with, talk with people. You know, I was 16 years old and it was an opportunity that came along for me to go and, and volunteer. And, and I took it because I thought, you know, this, like I, I wanted to see how I could meet other people and, and grow and, so I, it was, it was scary, but I learned through these people that 
you know, these elderly people that I, I went and cared for. And I saw how lonely they were, you know, because they were in, in a, in a uh, long-term care ward and mm -hmm. they didn't have families. They were alone, you know, they didn't have many visitors. And, and I really felt for them. And I saw how busy the nurses were. And I really wanted to, to help these nurses and, and engage with these elderly people because, you know, I felt their loneliness, which I was also feeling. I felt I had that loneliness in myself because I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was, I had this anxiety and, and stuff in me and, and I got to learn how every person has gifts, like how, what a difference they made in this world as I got to know them and, and how much wisdom they had and, and the impact they made in the lives of others. So one of the things that pulled you on your journey was solving the puzzle of loneliness for other people helped solve it for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was, that was part of it. Yes, and um, and then I I remember I I got into nursing school. That's and not a surprise given your history. <laughs> because the nurses in the in the hospital they said they said you'd make a really great nurse. And so, so I applied and I, I got accepted because I had all this volunteer experience and all that. And, and I realized my anxiety level was so profound. I would go and do these exams. I forget everything. <laughs> like literally, when it came to life, I literally forget. And, but I kept, you know, I kept going. I kept trying and then it was, it was time for the practicum and, <laughs> and the nurse and, you know, I had to take temperature pulse respiration. It was, I was like, I couldn't do it. Like my hands were like literally shaking. I was pers literally perspiring, the, you know, perspiration was coming down. And I just said, I told the instructor, I just can't do this. I need to look after myself. I need to go get some help. <laughs> I don't figure something out here. Um, so, and I believe it was part of my path. I was not meant to become a nurse. It's part of that journey. I, I later discovered that. But anyhow, here I was. And so I, I, my dad said to me, you either find yourself a pay job or you go to school. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I've never, you know, I have to go look for a job now or I have to go to school. And school was not working for me. <laughs> and so so I, I looked for a job and I did, and I found one. Oh, cool. And it was, I got interviewed, I, call, I was called in and, and then I went in and for this interview, they asked me all these questions and and I was like an hour and a half late for my, my, um, my orientation for the job when, when they gave me a location because I was looking for this location. I, 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 I was taking a bus. I never took buses. <laughs> and so I, I really had to figure it out. And so I finally got there. And there was this young man, this man sitting in a wheelchair, nonverbal communication system. And he was looking at me. And I, I, I said, hi, you know, and, and then I, and, and, and then I, I saw the door was wide open. So I knocked and, and I was, I went in and there were four men that lived in this house, nonverbal communication system, all in wheelchairs, very high medical needs. I had no clue how to look after these men. And I was given all this information. <laughs> and I was terrified. And, but I said, you know, I kept coming back. And I kept coming back. And then six months into the job, it was written on my evaluation, needs to communicate more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought 
because I got to know these individuals because they were non-judgmental. These, these were, they never judged me. They treated me like a human being. You know, I felt accepted and I had no problems communicating with them. I got to understand their non-verbal communication systems. I really got to understand that. But it was, I, I struggled because of the staff because they were able to talk. <laughs> And I was worried about what they were thinking of me. And it sh and I was in so much scared. So it was then that I I wanted to be a quality worker. I didn't want to just be a worker. I want to be a quality worker. And so I started thinking and I took I went to the counselor training and uh, looking for counseling. I ended up at the counselor training institute. <laughs> And you went seeking help and became the helper. I became the helper. Yeah. And so I went there and and in that training, they there was, you know, of course we're doing our own self-discovery. And it was brought up that I had low self-esteem. I was like, what? I had low self-esteem. I didn't I didn't recognize it, of course, because I was in it. And um and then it was then I said, I said to the instructor, I said, well, well, how do I, how do I deal with this? Like, how do I, because I'm scared of talking in the staff meetings. I'm scared of speaking up. So he said, can you can either go to Del Carnegie or Toastmasters? They're really great places for you to go and learn how to communicate. And so I did. I, I chose Dale Carnegie and I went. And I remember I was just, terrified because I went to the first day there was like 50 people sitting in the room mm -hmm. I, and and we had to do two speeches every time we went into this classroom and I was like oh my gosh how do I do this and and anyways I started the first time I went up I I stood there I said a few words and I noticed everyone was looking at me like every person, I can see them looking at me and they were listening. And I was like, I was so petra. I just want to run out that back door. I, I didn't want to come back. But then I said, no, you have to keep coming back. You just have to do this because you have to get over this. And so I continued coming back every time. And uh, every class I came back. And the second time I got a little better. I was able to say a few more words. <laughs> and, but then I continued coming. I kept practicing. I practiced so hard. I, every day I'd practice. And I came, I, I finished that training with two awards. The crashing wow. and the highest award for achievement. They all picked me. I was like, I was so, you know, I, it was then that I discovered that I have a voice. People need to hear my message. That's really where I, it really impacted me when they recognized something in me and I knew that I had a bigger, something bigger to do to, to help more people. Uh, because one of the, the, I remember I brought one of the individuals with me and I taught the class how to do non, how to learn from someone with nonverbal communication systems on the demonstration uh, session. And, and it, was, it was such a great experience. I was so grateful you know, for that experience because um, that's really where I, I was really, I knew that there was something I, more I needed to do. Uh, I had to grow myself even more. And then of course, life happened and mm -hmm. I, um, I was in an arranged, I got an arranged marriage because I, I, you know, I was grown, I was raised in a very, uh, a, a, a family that, you know, believed in arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so I got into an arranged marriage and it was, it was a, it was a relationship that was like up and down. Like it was like a roller coaster ride and I lost myself again. I mean, after Dale Carnegie, I was like, like, I felt so great. I was like, they couldn't even stop me from talking. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, 
and then of course I was going through this this experience. It was another part of this journey in my life. Which, this being the arranged marriage. Arranged marriage, yeah. And I, uh, and I lost. I, I really, I lost myself there. I really, I lost who I was again. I, I was at a point in my life where I was like, I was crying every single day. I was, uh, I didn't, I didn't even know why I existed. I, I didn't even value myself. I didn't, I really did not even, I wished I, God would take me away. <laughs> You know, I really, I, I wished and I prayed and, but of course <laughs> I knew there was, there was, a, there was a greater reason I was still, I was here and in God, you know, and I, I knew that I, that was part of me. It was always there that there's something more, there's something more you have to do. And, and so I, I continued, I, I would still, you know, keep moving forward. I kept, you know, pushing through everything and dealing with everything and, and, and then in 2004, um, I, I was, you know, it was, I mean, I had a beautiful baby boy that was born along the journey. What a gift he was. And, uh, and then at 18 months old, when he was 18 months old, in 2004, uh, my husband um, was, you know, in a motor vehicle accident. And it was the most horrifying experience. Um, I was like, literally, it was like in the movies. I was, I was waiting for him to come home. Uh, he had a, purchased a restaurant in a small town and I had no clue how to run a restaurant. I had absolutely no clue because uh, I was always a caregiver. That's all I knew how to take care of people because um, I've been in this, you know, the same organization that I had been for about 14 years at that time and caring for special needs people. And that's how I, that's where my scope of <laughs> my knowledge was. Uh, so I had to deal every single day with something, something that came up. I had, you know, people, you know, like there was this restaurant fully functioning too. It was fully functioning. I had to deal with the landlord, I had to deal with the food suppliers. I had to deal with all these people that were calling me, the bookkeeper, the, you know, the, the, wow, there wasn't any time to grieve in there. No time. <laughs> Absolutely. And every day, what I learned was in that process is to have faith and just to, just surrender, just <laughs> surrender. I, that's what I learned. I learned to surrender uh, because I, I, and, and I always had that vision in my mind as not that I wanted to get out of this, you know, that I wanted to raise my son. I wanted to raise him to be a great, a good person, a good human being. And, and that's really always on my mind. And, and I knew this was part of my path. And, and I just, every day I dealt with everything that came up. I dealt with it. I dealt with it. I dealt with it. And, and, and I never sat on it. I just took action, took action, mm. took action every single day. And until, you know, it slowly started, you know, easing off and getting easier to deal with. Uh, it was a real, I mean, it was a real, I mean, it was a real learning experience. It was an experience that left me with so much knowledge. And, um, and then, of course, after that, I, um, I worked, I, started, I, was, I went, I, I always continued working. I always believed that to move forward, I had to always keep myself occupied with doing something. I had to always keep growing myself and keep learning more and um and just giving you know and helping others with what the knowledge that i have so i can help them and so they can like that's why i loved working with these special needs because because it was about giving them a life of a fulfilling life with you know with opportunities for growth in themselves and to live their most optimal lives. And that's what I really, really valued 
um, and, 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 and with the knowledge I had to share that with the staff and help them grow to be incredible staff that, you know, that they, they can possibly be and or if they need to move forward to whatever they needed to achieve in their lives to be successful in their lives and to be happy. That was what I, I always valued and uh, and I remember I was still at this time I was still I was stuttering still. I was I, I was because I had lost my mother in 2003. She had passed away. Um, and then 2004, 11 months after my husband passed away. So it was I had all this, <laughs> you know, all this anxiety in me still. Uh, so I, I started seeking again, I said, I need to, because I knew there was this this yearning in me that I had to do more. I had to do, I had to grow myself even more because I need to get out of this anxiety again. And so I, I'm, I went to a place called, like I, I went to Peak Potentials, which led me, and I believe every place I went to, I gained knowledge. I gained something from there, which led me to people in each place, which led me to opportunities um, where I was able to resonate with. Because I remember at CEO space, I was, I had written children's stories. <laughs> and that's what I went with. I had no business, like I did it, well, I had some business knowledge because of the restaurant, but no, like I didn't have a business. And here I was amongst all these business leaders. And they were professional leaders, like they were um, United Nations leaders there. There were like CEOs from huge organizations from all over the world. And here I was with children's stories. <laughs> and, oh, I trust me, we're talking CEO space and my journey into CEO space was very similar. So yeah, I mean, when, when I listened to you talk in Sunny, I feel like you're telling my story because mm -hmm. I'm also a Dale Carnegie graduate. I'm also a CEO space graduate. And when we walk into a room and we've are, we don't need anybody else to judge us, we've already judged ourselves as not as good enough, not as good as they are, not as uh, ready as they are. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a very common human experience that is the most challenging experience someone can have when they are responsible. As a single parent, as the survivor when your mother passed and when your husband passed, you know, you were in a place where high anxiety is, is common and you did something about it. So beyond peak potentials, because CEO space, great for business, not maybe the greatest place to cure anxiety because it can sure turn up the heat. <laughs> yeah. What did you do next? So after that, I, I, it was there that I met a lady by the name of Shelly Hunt, a leader. And I was, because when I was there, I, I, I tried to connect with other people, but Shelly saw something in me. She believed in me. She saw something. And she was willing to, willing to mentor me. And I was like, I was like, wow, she actually recognizes me. She sees me. And so, and so she, she took me under her wing and she was like, she was very nurturing. And she, she, you know, we went through so many different, you know, she asked me so many questions and I did all that inner work and stuff like that. And, and I wrote two books I, I wrote with her, you know, and I wrote the self-esteem survival guide was one of them. Oh, and, yeah. and then uh, Soul Path is the second book that I wrote. And that those books really helped me connect more to myself as to, as to who I was. And, and it, it helped me real, realize that verbiage is so important in our lives. Communication is so important. How we communicate with ourselves and how do we communicate with others. And it's like to really, you know, to recognize that. 
uh, and and who we associate ourselves around and what kind of environment do we want to be in and and I also had the privilege of doing service which I love it's like service is my heart I love serving and um, I got the opportunity to go to Mexico and we refurbished a school with a whole bunch the whole bunch of leaders it's all about collaboration we've got to work together we can't I can't do things by myself. I have, we have, it's so important to collaborate with other people and learn from them too, because they have knowledge that I don't have and, and gifts that I don't have. And it's to gain that, those gifts and those knowledge from them uh, and, and see how I could grow myself uh, through that. And it was such a, beautiful experience to you go to Jamaica where we refurbished another school and it, it was it was just so beautiful because we impacted a community a community that needed a school because they were going to shut down that school in Jamaica mm -hmm. and those kids would not have had a school to go to because it wasn't under code and so with this mission that school is up and running and these children have a school to go to and they have you know their families you know ha, you know are impacted as well you know uh through this whole experience uh so keep us on this journey with you because the process of writing the books the process of going and doing the mission work and underneath it all when it came to speaking up about where you personally could make a difference. What was your anxiety level? Where I could personally make a difference? Um, my anxiety level is, I mean, I have to finish my story with that uh, because uh -huh. another person that I met, uh, uh -huh. I was led to, I believe, but through all the, because I realized there was a spiritual place in me. Uh, because the leaders that I was meeting, I, I, I saw spirituality in them. They came, they, they brought that aspect of themselves to me. And I recognized that in them. And I saw their patience, I saw patience. I saw all these divine qualities. And, and I was led to meet Guruji Mahendra Trivedi. Whoa, uh, you've got to say that name a lot slower. There were a lot of syllables in there. Absolutely. Guruji Mahendra Kumar Trivedi. Uh, he's the founder of the Trivedi Effect. And I was blessed and so fortunate in this lifetime. I believe the create, you know, I we are a part of creation. All of us are. We are we are we were like I came to recognize that, you know, especially when my father passed, I re recognized that we are responsible spirit we are a soul because when that body leaves this world the body's still here i mean when the, the soul leaves this world the body's still here the soul leaves the world and and i just i recognize that um because with guruji i i was so fortunate because through his blessings i saw a change in my life i saw the impact I saw how I was being able, I was able to communicate uh, again, like more and more. And I saw the impact it had on my, my son uh, receiving the energy. And I saw how his life, his confidence level was amazing. And we, he was really sick when we would go, uh, when we first met him. And I was, I was always catching colds and I was always ill. And as we got received more of this divine blessings from Guruji, who is the highest form of consciousness on the face of this planet today, and, and there's science, there's a lot of science, um, and his physiology is not like any other human being on the face of this planet. And, um, because, and, and there's science around that as well. There's been research. Um, well, I know you are a very science-driven person. And so that's an amazing 
place to be. So he became your mentor. Yes. He's my, my spiritual teacher. He's, I, 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 I listen to his discourses regularly. And for me, my journey in this life is to continue growing myself, to continue being that, you know, to really absorbing that divine knowledge that, you know, the principles and fundamentals of nature, to really understand that and live by those qualities in, in this lifetime is to, uh, you know, is to be more caring, be more loyal, be more grateful, uh, sacrifice, uh, to, to be of greater service, to be of highest potential that I can be in this lifetime to help others. Your, your mission and your heart are both huge in Therani. And the power that you have to break these things down and to put them into a book that gives people step-by-step -step tangible ways to do things. And so I am super, super grateful because your book, The Self-Esteem Survival Guide, you gave us permission to connect it with our mission, which is the suicide prevention movement. And so, that connection, having your book on our website, having it available, you know, this is just one more piece that helps people create the buffer between where anxiety took you very close to the ledge. And now you're very far away from that edge. And so we have enough time for people to ask you questions and for you to share perhaps some steps that people can take as you have continued this journey. So let's bring them to where you are now. You are being mentored, you are on the soul path, you are working with the energy, seeing the impact that it has on you, on your health, on your confidence, on your son, on his health and on his confidence. And then what? Um, so, where I'm heading now is I, you know, is to, uh, as I said, to continually, continually receive these uh, blessings and, and I have to just laugh. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to out how we met. Okay. All right. We, we were both in a beta inspirational speakers program. Now, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we were both in Dale Carnegie. Now here we were, we met in the inspirational speakers program in that beta course. And when you first did a video, I could not even hear you. Your voice was so soft. And when I first did my video for that group, I was still trying to hide the elephant in the room around being the mother of a teenage suicide attempt survivor. You know, so we came in there with our baggage, with our stuff and growing together in this space where now you are sharing your message in the world that there's an energetic connection that we all have with each other. So self-esteem is also esteem of everyone. And that's what I got out of listening to you is we've, and the one thing that just chapped my ass, and I'm just going to talk about it, is that we were doing our TEDx training. And, you know, what does this TEDx talk mean to you? And I was all caught up in, you know, it's going to help me launch this mission. And I, you know, it's, it's going to be this, this major thing. And when it was your turn and you were asked, what does this TEDx stage mean to you? And you said, Another chance to get better at my speaking. Yeah. Our mentor spent like an hour trying to get inside my head and crack open the nut so that I would not have anxiety, so I would not be attached to an outcome. So that, so that you, you know, he was like, okay, you're good. And he went on to the next person and everybody was like, what? 
the rest of us needed a minimum of an hour of one-on-one -on -one help to get to the place that you came into the room with, it's just another chance to get better at speaking, you know, with a, with a TEDx quality coach, with a TEDx quality presentation stage, with different rules. You know, and it was like, holy Toledo. From what, how long we've known each other, your journey to be just so simply positively present is how do we bottle this and like go around and give people vaccines? Because this is the epidemic of our age. The epidemic is suicide. As much as the news is talking about the pandemic, today on the, it's Sunday, on the Today Show, which in the US is an icon on Sunday mornings, they blasted out that twice as many people, double the number of people are con contemplating suicide in June of 2020 compared to June of 2018. In two years, that the number of suicide-focused people has doubled and nobody's talking about it. And so for us to be able to have a conversation that connects self-esteem to suicide prevention and then connects self-esteem to esteeming the world, being present to what's going on in your world in Thrani. We have the link that we're going to give everyone so that they can connect with you so that we can give them your website and they can connect with you. And if they're interested in the book, we're gonna be um, giving them, we're building out the website, finally, for, for the movement. So anybody who goes hunting for it, if you're finding just episodic things, yeah, you're gonna find pieces because we're in the process. Nothing happens overnight except the ability to change your belief about I have to do something to prove I'm worthy to be here or I'm worthy to be here. Now, what do I want to go do? I love that your mission is kind of to help people get to that side of the coin. I'm worthy. Now, what do I want to go do? If we don't have any more powerful question to ask ourselves at the end of the day, that would be a good one. So, cool. All right. What else did you want everyone to know today? Because I have taken and shifted things around a little bit. And you are just such a delight to talk to. I'm so happy to see you again. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. As I say, you know, my heart is, is of service. And I just, I, my, my whole mission in life is to help people recognize that they really have so much worth, you know, is to look within ourselves, uncover all that sludge, because we, you know, life brings things in, you know, the outside world, you know, there's a, the outside world and things that we can perceive and we, we perceive and we, we, we see, but there's a real inner world and it's and truth exists underneath all that pain that you know those emotions those those all those things uh that we that we've experienced in our lives and there's there's beauty that exists within us there is true beauty that exists there and it's to to get back to innocence to get back to that place of innocence in ourselves is really is really a, a beautiful thing. We are born knowing that we are worthy. We are born knowing that if something doesn't feel right, we yell till somebody fixes it. Yeah, you know, we're born innately knowing that it's supposed to feel good to be here supposed to be warm, we're supposed to be fed, we're supposed to be taken care of, we're supposed to be held. 
we are born with those four beliefs, you know, um, hardwired into the system. And then life happens and we get static. And what you, you know, elegantly put it, because it does feel like sludge. You know, we, we, we get gunk in our wiring. And the journey of your life, the journey that you walk through people through in the Self-Esteem Survival Guide, the journey that we are intending to take the whole world on is such a life-affirming journey in Thrani that gives people a bigger and bigger buffer between them and the ledge that I just want to honor you for your service heart, for your mission to just serve the world, however that shows up. It is a place of peacefulness in you that I just want to recognize and invite everyone to aspire to. Because I'm not there yet. <laughs> you are just a delight. All right, so you've got the Soul Path book. Tell me about the Soul Path book, because this one I haven't read yet. So let's just pep this up a little bit. What is so good about the Soul Path book? So the Soul Path gives you is basically a, a journey from birth until oh uh, really? So we, you know, uh, until we we leave. <laughs> basically. So is it like the self-esteem survival guide where it is very user-friendly because you did a great job with story and contemplation and questions did you use the same format for the soul path book it's similar but it's a little different um we talk i talk about the um you know we start off as a child um, and then mind needs matter i talk about um Vision, uh, mission versus journey. Uh, I talk about uh, the butterfly. Okay. Well, we're going to pause there because I have no clue. Mission versus journey. You know, people who want to know more can go get the book. You know, mission versus journey. What is mission versus journey? We've got a couple of minutes. Go ahead, take us there. So it's it's about like we have daily things that we do, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's things that we do subconsciously as well. And um, so there's, you know, to recognize uh, what are we doing on a daily basis? Like, you know, to get to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And, and the journey of getting there, you know, through our subconscious, you know, as well. Okay, so, so everybody's on a journey and we're living life kind of by habit on the yeah. journey. Got it. Yeah, so we, you know, it's about, yeah, this book really takes us on that, you know, the, the road to be like a, of a leader kind of, because, because I, you know, that was my journey <laughs> to become a leader. And uh, it's, a, it's a soul path leader. Um, from the heart, someone who's compassionate, somebody who's loyal, and it takes you on that journey. And Okay, speak up again because I lost that last sentence. Your greatest self, you know, ah. your authentic self. Yeah. So this is not only journey from birth to adulthood, yes. but I'm seeing it also as the journey that I know you went on from caregiver right. to leader. And those are two very different places in your life, two very different roles that we take on. And so sharing that journey with everyone. And Therani, what a wonderful thing. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. I appreciate you a great deal. And so as all good things must, we're going to wind this up. We're going to say you're going to go to intherani.com. I-N-T-H-I-A-R-N-I.com. And that's where you will interact more, find out more of all of the good things that Entharani is bringing forth into the world to help you be present to the worthy, wonderful, 
amazing person that you already are. And Anthrani, thank you for bringing that light into our conversation.